Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at this little device here. Now, this is a rotary encoder. Now, this is the actual encoder here. It's mounted on a breakout board. Now, this is a 20-step encoder. Now, there's no stop on the input shafts. I could turn this round and round. There's no stop. And there's 20 steps per revolution. And each step is a click-click action, which I could feel on each detent. Now, on the breakout board, there's five pins. See, at the very bottom, we have a clock pin and a data pin. So, as I turn the shaft, there'll be a pulse train coming out of the clock and data pins which will be 90 degrees out of phase. Now depending which one is leading or lagging we could actually decode the direction of the shaft either clockwise or counterclockwise. And on the clock pin we'll get a pulse for each step either clockwise or counterclockwise. Now there's a switch pin so there's a push button switch incorporated inside the encoder so if I press down on the shaft I'm pressing on the push button switch so this switch pin is connected to one side of the switch. The other side of the switch is connected to ground. So when I press on the push button switch, that pin is grounded. And we have a plus input, plus VCC, 5 volts, and ground. And that's what powers the, the two pull-up resistors on the back of the, of the board that's, that's pulling up the two pins, the clock and the data line. So in this video, we're going to look at a little interface. We're going to interface this board to a circuitry, and I'm not going to use a microcontroller. So for beginners out there that are not into microcontrollers, this will just be logic gates. So we're going to hook this up to a flip-flop and some inverters so you can get familiar with the operations of a rotary encoder. Okay, as we rotate the shaft of the rotary encoder, this is the pulse train outputs that we're going to get from the clock and data lines. And you can see they're 90 degrees out of phase. Now this signal output represents the counterclockwise rotation of the rotary encoder. And this is the signal output that we're going to get on a clockwise rotation of the rotary encoder. Now if we look at the clock pulses and we focus in on the leading edge of the clock, that's from when it goes from a 0 to a 1, on a counterclockwise rotation, when the clock goes from 0 to 1, the output data will be high. So from 0 to 1, data is high. From 0 to 1, the data is high. Now when we turn the shaft clockwise, and if we look at the clock, when the clock goes from a 0 to 1, the data will be low. So 0 to 1 data is low, 0 to 1 leading edge the data is low. So if we take this signal and feed it into a simple D flip-flop, so we feed this clock pulse train into the clock input and we feed the data line into the data input of the D flip-flop. Now the Q output will go high on a counterclockwise signal and the Q output will go low on a clockwise signal. So this is a very easy way to decode the shaft rotation of a rotary encoder. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of a very simple rotary encoder interface that does not use a microcontroller. And it's pretty inexpensive to build. The rotary encoder I got online for about a dollar each, so five for five dollars. And the 4013D flip flop is less than a dollar. So you can build this circuit up and get familiar with a rotary encoder. Now we can see the output of the rotary encoder, the data line and the clock line, is fed into the data line and the clock line of the D flip flop. And the Q output LED indicates clockwise, and the Q naught LED indicates counterclockwise. So as I rotate the encoder clockwise or counterclockwise, I'll get my corresponding LEDs coming on. Now you see on the bottom there's a little driver driving another LED. That's for the step. So there's 20 steps per revolution, so each step this LED will pulse. And here's our push button switch that's internal to the, to the rotary encoder. So every time I press the push button switch, this LED will come on. So it's a pretty simple schematic, pretty simple circuit that you could get familiar with a rotary encoder. Okay, here's my little interface circuit that I built on my breadboard. You can see my indicator LEDs. This LED here is my clockwise LED. This is my counterclockwise LED. This is my push button switch. And this is my step, my step function uh, on the rotary encoder. So if I turn the encoder clockwise, you can see the step LED pulse and my clockwise LED is on, that's this one here and if I go counterclockwise it changes and I'm getting my step so I can go either way counterclockwise, clockwise you can see my step 20 steps per revolution counterclockwise and clockwise and if I press the push button switch you can see my push button LED come on so that's my little interface circuit you notice I have another chip, I have a CD4093 
I've added that for contact bounce because I want to actually hook this up to a microcontroller. So I'm doing all my contact bounce uh, using hardware so it makes my code a lot simpler. So that's my simple interface there and I'll hook this up to the microcontroller and we actually can watch uh, the steps and the direction being decoded on a microcontroller. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard where I added a 4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate for debounce circuits. You can see here I debounced the push button switch. I'm using this flip flop here to debounce the clock output from the encoder so I have a clean signal into the second flip flop clock line that decodes the clockwise and counterclockwise directions. Also I have a clean signal for my step output so there's no debounce on my step output for counting my step pulses. Now the data line from the encoder doesn't have to be debounced because whenever the clock goes from 0 to 1 on its leading edge, the data line will always be clean. So you can feed the data line straight into the D flip-flop and that will, that will decode the clockwise and counterclockwise uh, directions. So that's the schematic there. So if you want to hook this up to a microcontroller, we have, the, we have all the signals debounced so it makes the code a lot simpler. Okay, before I continue on in this video, I just wanted to clarify a few things. Now the circuits I've described in this video is for experimental purposes only to get familiar with the, with the workings of a rotary encoder. Now if you wanted to build your own product using a rotary encoder, you'd go about it a lot differently. Now the output of the encoder, you can see here the clock and data lines, would be fed into a GPIO pins of a, of a microcontroller. Then you would set up an interrupt service routine on each one of those GPIO pins. Then you would write a finite state machine. Because there's four states that you have to go through for each step of the rotary encoder. So there's your first state, second, third, and fourth. And if you decode them properly, then that's a proper step. And, you could, and then you could determine your clockwise and your counterclockwise rotation and, and your actually step pulse. That will take care of contact bounce. That will take care of somebody doing a half step on, on the encoder. So I've, I've made a video describing finite state machines. And I'll, I'll link that in the description box below if you're interested in programming finite state machines. Okay, I have my rotary encoder interface connected up to my Arduino Nano. And I'm running a serial terminal program called TerraTerm, which is monitoring the output. So if I turn my rotary encoder clockwise, you can see it indicates clockwise. And I have a little counter running. It's counting the steps. So it's incrementing the counter. If I turn my encoder counterclockwise, it recognizes the, the direction change and it's decrementing the counter. It's going down. So I could go all the way down. So it's negative. I could change directions clockwise. Come all the way up again. And if I hit my push button switch, you can see it indicates a button press. So this would be a good input device for a microcontroller program, a menu-driven program where you could scroll through a menu and then you could actually enter values and you could increase the value by turning it uh, clockwise or decrementing the values by turning it counterclockwise and then when you come to the right value you hit, you hit the button press which will enter it into your code. So it's a handy little device for in inputting data into a microcontroller. Okay here's the code running on my Arduino Nano to monitor my rotary encoder and it's written in fourth so it's very compact my program is called Rotary, and I'm using three of the GPIO pins on the Arduino Nano. So pin 2 monitors the step input, pin 3 is the direction, and pin 4 is the button press. So the first thing it does is zero the counter, then it goes into a begin until loop. That will continue on until I hit any key, then it will come out of the program. So the first thing it does is monitoring pin 4, and if pin 4 goes high, it knows the button has been pressed. It will print button press. Then it will stay in a begin until loop until the button is released, and it will come out of that loop and continue on. Then it's going to monitor pin 2, and that's the step input. If it sees a step input, then it's going to monitor pin 3 for the direction. And if pin 3 is low, then it knows it was t the rotary encoder was turned clockwise, so it'll increment the counter and display clockwise. And if the pin 3 was high, then it knew that the uh, rotary encoder was, was uh, turned counterclockwise, and it'll decrement the counter and display counterclockwise. And that'll continue on over and over again as long as we turn the encoder and press the button. So that's the software there. It's pretty simple. 
So I hope this video gave you some ideas how you can get familiar with the operations of a rotary encoder.